Meat City, baby. Hello and welcome back to Meat City Gaming. JD here with another World of Tanks console video. And today I wanted to take a little bit of time to discuss the recent D-Day event that we had in game. And originally my plan was to kind of make this a guide uh, for people to use during the event to maximize your time and figure out the best way to get through this thing. Uh, but I had some tef technical difficulties getting those recordings in place. And so now here we are well after the event has ended. But I still think it's valuable to give a review of the event itself, give my impressions, because in my opinion, I'm trying to think of an event that I enjoyed more than this one, and I'm struggling to do it. This was really, really good, and I would certainly encourage events similar to it to come back in the future, and certainly with similar reward structures and participation encouragement to what this one had. So let's get into all of that. First things first, what is this event? Well, it is a seven, uh, seven player PVE event. So you load into the battle here on the beach of the, the Normandy map, and you need to accomplish a number of objectives before the 15 minute timer runs out to accumulate points along the way. And so the first thing that you need to do is clear the beach. You start at your spawn point, you may be in the water, you may be in a little uh, delivery boat, and you need to eliminate, there's like eight or 10 uh, German tanks on the beach and you have to destroy them all to get yourself two points for the event and unlock the next phase of the battle. And uh, one, of the, one of the limitations, the, one of the few downsides to this event is the very limited nature of eligible tanks uh, that you have. It's only, I think tier five and tier six American tanks and it's no artillery. It can be light, medium, or heavy. Um, I don't know if there's any other the caveats or restrictions, but I think that's it. Um, and that can be fine, but there's a lot of tanks in there that aren't super powerful. Um, basically, the Calliope, the event tank for all of last year that you can get with the rockets, is super OP because it can dish out tons of damage, which is one of the keys here. You really need to be able to put out a lot of damage very quickly um, there's not a lot of tanks that have good armor. You're not really going to be able to kind of tank and absorb damage so much in this battle because you're going to be up against higher tiered enemy tanks at certain points and they're just going to have more penetration than you can uh, safely use your armor to deflect. So the Calliope here is great. Um, if you, the other way you can go is a very small, fast tank with good DPM, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So once you've cleared the beach, you've accomplished that first mission, the offshore battleships provide some uh, fire support and they shoot at these uh, barricades that are blocking two paths from the beach up onto the first plateau where the next objective is. And that next objective is three bases that you need to capture. Similar to a base in the regular game, you get your tank into the circle, you'll start a capture timer, and if you complete that, that base will be captured and you can move on to the next one. You get one point for each of those three bases that are captured, and then I think it's a five point bonus, it's either three or five, uh, of a bonus that you get if all of the bases are captured, which will then open up the final objective in the map. This is a much more difficult um, hurdle than the first phase of the battle, mostly because enemies now will continuously respawn. On the beach, you had that initial spawn of enemies, and when they're gone, they're gone, you're done, but now, you can eliminate the enemies that are on the map that you see, and more will just replace them. They'll spawn kind of farther away, and they will continue to run at you. So you can't fight your way out of it and secure a safe capture. You have to like make this moving, fighting battle, and then get dug into a secured position, and then defend it and hold off for long enough to fill the capture timer, and then move on to the next one. Um, there are, there's a, as you can see here, there's a Yag Panther that is perched always in that position. So. I think it makes sense to go up the right side of the beach. Everyone always does, and I would really recommend sticking together. I don't think it makes sense to split your forces into two and go up both sides at the same time, unless you have really good coordination and teamwork. Um, it's just not gonna work out. Because the enemy continues to spawn and push and come at you over and over again, I think it makes sense to concentrate your firepower, move as a group, eliminate the enemy quickly as a group, and then get into the base capture as a group. The more tanks you have in there, the faster the capture. So. Go up that right side and take C. But when you go up and to the right to get to C, there is this Yag Panther sitting there with his gun pointed in your direction. Um, their aim isn't crazy good. They're not like super 
uh, difficult to avoid and get past, but it is a dangerous enemy for many of the tanks that are eligible for this battle. So something you'll have to contend with. And I don't think that guy will respawn if you take him out. There'll be other tanks that take its place, but I don't think, and I'm not 100% sure on this, another uh, elite Yag Panther will, will come in. So push up the, up the slope, kill the tank camping at the top, go to the right, get inside the base, and then most of the enemies will come from the far side of the map, from the, uh, from the west, up over the central area. Um, and so you can kind of get behind, there's bunkers, there's a house and a bunker, get behind them while you're doing your capture. On the odd time, there may be an enemy that comes uh, spawning from the north and he will have line of sight. Like here you can see this Stug 3 that we're dealing with. Uh, usually if you get rid of those, you can then reliably not have another spawn or at least not many. And so use that side as your cover side to finish this base capture. The bases don't take incredibly long. Um, I think it's 35-ish seconds to capture one of the bases if it's just one tank. And obviously two, three get in there, you can capture these ba bases very quickly. So if somebody else is capping the base, go up the middle and provide a shield for them. The NPCs, let them shoot at you, block, do whatever you can to distract while that guy's capping. If you're capping, consider staying safe. It may not be worth poking out to damage that guy who's driving towards you because if he shoots you and you lose 20 seconds off your cap timer, I don't know if you've really accomplished much because even if you kill that tank, another one is gonna be coming and that 20 seconds that you lost may not even make up for the respawn timer of the next tank. Speaking of respawn timers, you do get to respawn in the battle. There's like a 10 second cooldown if you get destroyed and then you spawn at a checkpoint. There's gonna be a little bit of travel time to get back into the fight, but not too much. So it's not the end of the world if your tank gets destroyed. Uh, however, on the plus side, every time you capture one of the three bases here, it spawns either uh, repair and um, reload supply drops that you can drive over to fix all the damage to your tank with the repair drop and reload all of your ammo with the supply drop. This is vital for the Calliope because those rockets are expendable and you don't have many of them and they're really important. So consider, oh, I'm in my normal whatever tank and I'm, I'm 10 shells down. Should I take that ammo drop? If there's a Calliope helping you out, maybe not. Maybe you leave it for somebody who needs that refill a little bit more vitally than you do. Um, because if you take it, it does disappear globally. They're not individualized instances of these repairs. It's on the map for everybody. And if you take that one, it's gone for everybody for the rest of the fight. So once you've established the C base, you've taken C, going to get B isn't as difficult, I think, because now you start to push into the middle and the enemy spawns get pushed back uh, to the north and to the west. And there's a kind of a little niche that you can dive into where you've got a really nice kind of uh, hidden spot that you're in the circle and you start to capture and they may, enemies have to run this gauntlet down this tiny little narrow path to run in and damage you. And their NPC control, they will do that. They'll YOLO right in there and they'll shoot you once and reset your timer. But if you have allies helping you and you're all there together, you should find a gap in the coverage to secure B without too much trouble. The big push then is trying to get to A because now you've got this kind of rolling hill. You've got to go down, up, down, and then you've got to get into the A base and there's all this area back to the north where they spawn and they just run down in at you and you don't really have a good cover spot protected from those tanks. Um, so you can do, if you're in the heavy damage, the heavy armor, the slower tank, you want to take the path that I've taken here in this video. The other thing you can do, if you're in a light tank, a small, fast tank, but you also need to be able to put out some damage. Don't bring a pure scout that's got no gun. Um, you wanna be fast, you wanna be able to get in and out of trouble quickly, good view range is great, and having some DPM. When you capture the sea base, you can go all the way to the to the back wall, to the, a, uh, to the zero line, run north, and set up shop there behind the A base. You'll, uh, you'll interrupt their spawn a little bit, you'll kind of disrupt that, and when they do spawn in, you can shoot at them and they'll turn and come at you away from the A base, which is vital if the rest of your allies can kind of push in there together. If you're able to pull three, four tanks, you don't even need to kill them because if you kill them, they'll respawn. If you just shoot at them and you get them to chase, then all of a sudden that's three, four tanks completely out of commission that your allies pushing that base don't have to worry about. So two kind of options there, brute force, 
push in, deal the DPS, uh, dig into a defensive spot and try to capture the base, or flank and support, distract, pull enemies away while your teammates do what needs to get done there. And you can adapt either strategy based on the tank that you've selected and based on what your allies are doing. But if you have a slow lumbering tank, even the Calliope, I would not do that flank strategy. It takes too much time to get into that position and you can't escape. If they force a flood at you, they'll just take you out and then turn and go back to the base and you're gonna be stuck now waiting on a respawn timer. If you're small and quick, you can get out of there, use the hills to evade the fire. And then when they turn and go back, you can come right back into position and shoot at them again and re-pull them and kind of play this cat and mouse game. So the A spawn is kind of the make or break uh, point here. It's the first major hurdle, I think, for the operation. You can see in this battle here, we're down to just five minutes left. It's been 10 minutes in this battle and we haven't been able to capture this last base yet. And usually that's a really bad sign because the the final version of the, uh, the battle here, the final phase of the battle is really difficult. Um, so what you're gonna do, finish that A cap. I've had some go really well where we took all of the three bases, including A in just five minutes and then had 10 minutes to push on to the final objective. And then I had this one where we took 10 minutes to get the final capture and then only had five minutes left to go for the final push. Um, so finish up A, again, you'll get the drop of ammo and resupply and rearmaments, and then try to push together into the final base. The headquarters will spawn in just a little bit farther uh, back from where the three, three bases were. It's really uh, secure. There's only two kind of entrances, and then or I think there's three entrances, but there's a big wall that you can't climb over to get into. So they really funnel you into this final area and inside there are several German Tiger tanks that are at least a tier, maybe two tiers higher than anything you're bringing into the battle. And they do respawn. So even if you take them out, they have a ton of hit points compared to what you have. You can put a full rocket barrage with the Calliope into these things and they're gonna survive. And then they're gonna shoot you two, three, four times while you're trying to reload and do damage to them. So they are very deadly, very dangerous and they respawn and there's more than one of them. Uh, so push as a group, get into the base all at once, go into this headquarters all at once, focus fire, and then try to take a position. There, there are some bunkers in there. Position your tank behind a bunker so that the way you push in, you can leave that open to your backside because that's where you'll respawn from if, you're, and if your allies get killed. And then the enemies are gonna come from in front and try to, it's, it's not so much about damaging. Again, every tank you kill will respawn and come back. It's just tuck in, stay hidden. If you've got the capture points, keep capping and let your allies distract and shoot and do the dirty work and you finish capping because you need to get that capture timer done in order to complete the mission and get the final, I think it's six points. It's a big one for getting this headquarters capped. Um, the other thing that you wanna consider if you, again, have that fast, light tank, once you've captured A, you can flank back down the zero line and, again, mess with the enemy spawn so that they don't flood into that uh, base where your friends are trying to capture. But the Tiger tanks, they spawn in there initially, so that's one problem. And two, they spawn, if you kill them, they'll respawn kind of close there. So it's not so much easy pickings that you can pull those away. But you can still be pretty effective at harassing and disrupting the enemy reinforcements pushing into that base. And then with a little bit of luck and a little bit of skill, you'll be able to capture that base and complete all of the objectives. And then you'll secure 16 points for the battle. And that's the second part that I wanna talk about. Um, the rewards and the replayability of this mission are really good. It was, its fun factor is high. It got a little bit grindy, again, just because the number of tanks that you can use is so limited, but Having this goal of getting points to earn real rewards is such a rare treat for, for this event. You got uh, the Thunderbolt, a tank that was eligible for the event, a tier six American medium, I believe it was. Um, if you got enough points over the course of the event, it lasted for a week, I think it was 250 points and you could earn 16 uh, points in a battle. So it was something like 20 battles. If you complete all the objectives, then you could unlock the tank. Um, I'll say it was a little bit heavier of a commitment than I would have wanted, but perfectly reasonable for a free tank for a week long event to jump in and play two or three battles a day or play for two hours a day or so and knock this thing out. 
I thought it was absolutely fantastic. And then there were other rewards along the way as well. Every 50 points, I think, you unlocked another tier, got another reward, working your way up to that final reward at 250. So all of that, simply fantastic. The Halloween event comes out, there's not really great rewards, there's not really great replayability. So it's kind of a, you know, try it once and then forget it. The other thing that was great is the end of the battle rewards were fantastic. Tons of silver, tons of XP. The downside was, if you're playing the Calliope, you don't need the XP, right? Which is a bit unfortunate. And if you, I brought in my M5, which I, a tank I was actively grinding at the time, it's so weak compared to the Calliope, I felt like I was pulling my team's chance of success way down by being in that bad tank uh, in the battle. But if we were able to complete it, the XP rewards were fantastic. So again, great because you could work on tanks you were grinding and feel like you were making meaningful progress. The only other downside to the event is that it didn't uh, combine with the other events. There was a, an, uh, a, 40, a Warhammer 40k event going on, an earn op for a tank there, and progress in the D-Day mission didn't help with that earn op, and also the contract, there was a contract going on for a tank that, the, that you could double up. If I was doing the 40k, I could play a medium tanks and be working on my 40k earn op and my contract, but if I was doing D-Day, I wasn't working on either of those. So I had this weird conflict of, I wanna do the D-Day event because I wanna participate in it and do the earn op. But by doing that, I'm not earning these other two. So I wanna just play the regular game and do those. And so that was a little bit unfortunate. I understand we can't have everything and this is a minor complaint, but it would have been awesome. I would have played a ton of the D-Day if those missions also completed my contract requirements and also were going towards the other 40K earn off that was going on at the time. Um, the fact that they weren't just meant I had these, I want to play World of Tanks two things at the same time and I can't. And that was a little bit of a, of a negative to the event. But overall, fantastic event. Highly encourage this to happen again in the future. I love this as a template. They should absolutely use it for future events uh, to do as similar to that as possible. Just open up the tank selection, open up maybe some different variety of the maps if the bases were in different locations or you know, some other just little variability to change up so that it's not just doing the exact same thing 20 times in a row. That would have been great. Some small little changes they can make here, but this should be the template, the base model for events in the future. Sign me up for more of these. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.